As always, if you haven't done so yet, make sure that you pause the video and try to answer the question on your own first before listening on. In part A of this question, we are asked to determine the length of the wire, and we are given a couple of useful pieces of information. For example, the resistivity of the wire is given along with the desired resistance. And we know that there is a relationship including those two variables given by the equation on your screen here. We can see that the resistance is dependent upon the resistivity, the length, and the area of the conductor. Now we need to solve for the length, so the first thing we might do is copy down this equation and rearrange it to solve for length. To solve for length, we could multiply both sides of the equation by the cross-sectional area A so that it cancels out on the right-hand side. And then we can divide both sides of the equation by the resistivity rho so that that cancels out on the right-hand side. So we have a seemingly handy equation to solve for the length. We know the resistance of the conductor along with the resistivity, but we don't have the cross-sectional area. The only thing we do know is that it was going to be shaped into a cylindrical conductor. So basically a cylinder. This is my attempt at drawing a cylinder. And the volume of a cylinder, of course, is equal to the length of the cylinder multiplied by the cross-sectional area. So we can write that down as follows, length times cross-sectional area or vice versa, and that's wonderful, but we also don't have the volume in this case either. Now many of us have learned from a different science class or even physics itself that density is equal to mass divided by volume, excuse me. If we solve that equation for volume, we could multiply both sides of it by V and then divide both sides by the density. And when we do that, we can see that the volume is equal to the mass over the density. So we're going to make that little substitution right here. We're going to change the volume to mass over density. And again, this equals the cross-sectional area multiplied by the length. Now what we'll do is, again, we don't know the area. We can solve for that area by multiplying both sides by 1 over the length. And by doing that, we cross it off on the right-hand side. So now we have mass over length times the density is equal to the cross-sectional area. So we're going to sub that into the equation we developed earlier. Right here, that area will be substituted with this expression right here. Pretty good so far, but now we have a new problem because the length appears on both sides of the equation and we're trying to solve for that length. So we're still going to have to isolate the length. We have a complex fraction. In the top numerator here, we're dividing by this LD. A little trick allows us to push that to the denominator. So essentially you now have the resistance times the mass all over the length times the density times that row value. And then to solve for length, we would multiply both sides of the equation by L so we cancel it out on the left-hand side. The right-hand side, unfortunately, is going to become L squared. And so, in order to solve for L, we're going to end up taking the square root of both sides. So you just take the square root on both sides, that will indeed isolate L, and now we have the square root of resistance times mass divided by density times the resistivity. We're gonna go ahead and take the values given in the question and plug them in. Now, this is looking tempting. We might want to plug this into our calculator, but we have one small problem. The density was given in terms of a non-standard unit. They gave us the density in terms of centimeters cubed. So we're going to have to use the fact that one meter cubed is equivalent to a million or 10 to the power of six centimeters cubed. We're gonna to need to use that conversion factor to change the centimeters cubed into meters cubed. So we'll go ahead and set that up right now. Now just take a look at how we set that up. It's very important to understand why it's arranged the way it is. The centimeters cubed that we inserted in our conversion factor is in the numerator, and then the centimeters cubed that was present in the density was in the denominator. Those are going to cancel out, and that gives us the meters cubed that we need for the correct standard unit. So now, once you carefully punch that into your calculator, you should end up with about 9.3. That's gonna come out into the standard unit of length, which is meters. That is the correct answer to part A of this question. But let's go back up and see what was happening in part B. In part B, it says, what must be the diameter of the wire? So now we're gonna look for the diameter of that cylindrical wire. Now, of course, we know that because it's a cylindrical wire, the cross-sectional area would equal pi times the radius squared. We also might know that diameter is equal to twice the radius. And if you divide both sides of that equation by two, you would see that the radius is equal to d over two. 
So we can make a little bit of a substitution there, change the radius to d over two. Don't forget to square it. So now your area formula becomes area is equal to pi. Now when you square d over two, you're gonna square the d to give you d squared, and you're gonna square the two to give you four. Now that's great, but again, we don't know the cross-sectional area. We do know that volume was equal to the length times the cross-sectional area. When we divide both sides of that equation by L, we get V over L is equal to that cross-sectional area. So we can make a substitution for that area. We can do volume divided by the length is equal to the right-hand side. But once again, another problem. We learned earlier that because of density equaling mass over volume, after a little manipulation, the volume was equal to the mass over the density. So just like before, we have to change volume to mass over density on the left-hand side there. We have a complex fraction on the left-hand side. That density can be shuffled to the denominator, so we have mass over density times length, and then we need to solve this for the diameter before we can begin plugging in. So you would multiply both sides of the equation by four, so you can cancel those fours out, on the right hand side, then divide both sides by pi. On the left side, that pi ends up in the denominator because you're dividing. And then to solve for d, you would take the square root of both sides. So there is the expression we need for the diameter. We can now go ahead and plug in. And once again, for the density, we're gonna end up using a conversion factor. So with everything plugged in, including the length that we calculated in part A, we end up with a diameter of about 9.3 times 10 to the minus 4 meters. That would be the correct answer in meters. If your homework system wants to do millimeters, then you would have to just make one more conversion. We all know, of course, that one meter is equal to 1,000 or 10 to the third millimeters. So if you put that into your calculator, you're going to end up with approximately 0.93 millimeters and that would be the correct answer for the diameter in millimeters and then this is the answer in meters thanks for taking the time to watch the video if you're interested in making a small donation to my cause i'd greatly appreciate it but of course please don't feel obligated to do so